All right. Well, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up to 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16, and we are looking at the prophet Samuel. We're in a series devotionally, the heroes of the Bible, and we're looking at them and learning from them in light of the days we're living in. You know, one of the things I think is very important if you're understanding the times, you're seeing that the Bible tells us we don't have to be afraid of what we're seeing happening in the world because God's in control. But also we need to recognize that in light of it, we don't have to run around like a chicken with our head cut off. We don't have to be afraid of what's taking place. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. But we need to continue to grow, to continue to follow Jesus, to continue to learn. And we can learn from the men and women of God, even in the past in the Bible. And we're learning from Samuel. We've seen him, his, how he was born, the miraculous way his mother cried out to the Lord, how he said, speak, Lord, your servant's listening, how in face with adversity, he prayed. He remembered the cross and God delivered him. And how even in the difficulty of, you know, he was the prophet of Israel, but Saul was the king. The people had begged God for a king like the other nations. And they got Saul. He wasn't a good king. But he had to deliver the word of the Lord, even in that difficult thing. But now today, we're going to see him anoint the next king of Israel, which will be God's king. The first king was man's king. The second king is God's king. It's interesting. Uh, I know we need to get to the text, but just in light of the prophetic events, you know, the Bible tells us that in the last days, there's going to be something called the seven years of tribulation. The rapture will happen before that. And during this time, someone will raise up, you know, they call him sensationally the Antichrist. The word anti just means instead of Christ. He's going to come on the scene as if he's the Messiah, right? He's not going to have a red cloak and a, you know, a handlebar mustache. He's going to be a diplomat. He's going to be a politician of politicians. He's an instead of Christ. It's just like Israel. After the Antichrist, after the first king arises that fails, then the second king will be God's king. See, after the Antichrist seven-year little stint of reign, after that, Jesus Christ, the king of kings, will come. And that's what we see here. Saul was a bad king. He was not a good king. But the second king, he's going to be much better. And we pick it up, verse, chapter 16, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I've rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil. They would use oil to anoint a king. And go, I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. So he's from Bethlehem. Interesting. Any, does that jog any memories for you? Bethlehem. For I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. Listen. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming. The, the prophet Samuel was in our town and said, do you come peaceably? And he said, peaceably, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So, so it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, listen, this is a very important verse. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. The Lord said to Samuel, 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For the Lord does not see as man sees. What you're seeing happen in the world, what you're seeing, God says, that's not how I'm seeing things. For man looks at the outward appearance but underline this. You want to learn about God? Get this verse in your heart. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. He looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God sees the heart. You know, you say, uh-oh, because my heart right now isn't in the best place. God sees the heart. He sees your heart right where it's at, and he says, bring it to me, and I'll fix it. I'll heal it. I'll refresh it. I'll squeeze it out like a sponge and fill it with good things. But he says there, God looks at the, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And the story goes on. Jesse will bring all his sons before Samuel, but God will say, nope, 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 nope. And then he'll say, I've got this one little runt son. He's out with the sheep. 
His name is David. David. Samuel will go out to, to be there to see him. When he sees him, the Lord will say, this is the one. I've seen his heart. And he's going to anoint him with oil. And he will be, King David will be the next king of Israel. And he's going to be a great king. He'll make plenty of mistakes. And we'll be looking at David next week. But listen, this week, God doesn't look at the outward appearance. He sees our hearts. What's going on in your heart? You know, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is Proverbs 16, verse 1. This is basically when I first became a Christian, I started reading the Bible. This was the first verse of the Bible that I sensed a rhema word. God speaking, like the, the word lipped off the page, like God was speaking to me. Proverbs 16, verse 1, it says, The preparations of the heart belong to man but the response of the tongue is from the Lord. And I remember saying to the Lord when I got saved, Lord, you've forgiven me of so much. What do you want me to do for you? And he said, prepare your heart. Get your heart ready. And what about you today? How are you preparing your heart? How are you keeping your heart right? The Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Keep your heart healthy before your, your God, before Jesus. And Father, help us to... Prepare our hearts, Lord, like David. Help us to be that one, those people that you see and say, the heart is right. So, Lord, we pray, get our hearts right with you even today. And, Lord, we just commit this to you. Thank you for all we've learned through the life of the prophet Samuel. Can't wait to meet him when we get to heaven. And we just thank you, Lord, and use us today. Get our hearts right, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.